to the tiny church there. Hey Nuggets, welcome to the food truck, my name is Ruka. Today we are doing Disco Elysium episode 13, lucky number 13. So last time on Disco Elysium, honestly, <laughs> again, not much of anything, a lot, a lot of exploration. Uh, I think we checked out an abandoned apartment, also an abandoned uh, R&D building of some sort, an electric R&D building as well as talk to some punk rockers. So yeah, th so the guys came here, uh, wanted to make a club in an old abandoned church. Okay, why not? No one's claiming it anyway. However, the drug the drug thing is a problem, so we had, them, we had to stop them from doing that. Ha at the same time though, uh, we are going to be checking out the church. There seems to be quite a few things that might be related to what Ruby was doing, as well as some spooky eyes probably around the church. So we got to check that out. So our next stop right now is to just check the church out, see what we can find, and hopefully find Ruby. We'll see. All right, let's go. All right, let's get going. The church is right here. And we went around, I think. Yeah. So at least we now we got the key. Oh no, it's a seagull. Better not be... Oh wait, this is not... Seagull was a little bit too close. Don't poop on me. Do not poop on me. Okay, we got the key now. Let's open this thing. Let's see what we can Heavy find. wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, Open the... drilled into the wood. Open the padlock. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Let's go. All right. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. Hmm. This is going to be really bad. Oh, is that Dolores Day? Why does she look like Jesus? All right, what do you tell me, Brain? A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. All right, we're gonna walk then. We don't want to alert anyone. This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. Okay, we're gonna walk. Our brain told us to walk, we will walk. More of a forked lighting pattern as you saw outside. Bark beetles, no, it looks intentional. Some long forgotten style. Interesting setup for a church though. I wonder what the, these things are on the side. I don't think they had a choir, but if these are pews on the side, interesting way to do it. Unless they were shoved to the side. That's probably some that's probably actually what happened. The blackboard is filled with complex equations that look recent. Something to do with radio frequencies. Jackpot! Jackpot, I think this is where Ruby was. That thing over there in the corner, uh, the glowing thing is Definitely suspicious, but we're gonna check that out after we check everything else out in here. Ruby has got to be here. I see some shoes, I see some money. The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. And then it's gone, almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. It seems the sound here is detached from its source somehow, if not blotted out outright. Truly unusual. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Do not yell. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. I don't think either of those are good. Uh, we're going to be alerting whoever's in here. Mm. It's gonna be spooky one way or another. 
but if I stomp my hand, uh, stomp my feet, I feel like there's going to be some floorboards um, that are going to give way. So let's not do that. Yell. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. It's unnerving. Stomp your feet. I guess I have no choice. We gotta do both. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total somehow. Kim, what's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Almost nothing, and it's beginning to worry me. Not really. It's extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. Can't hear shit. <laughs> Almost nothing, and it's beginning to worry me. The church just has strange acoustics, some engineering trick. Hmm. It's probably nothing, just our imagination. Whatever, it's definitely real. Something odd is happening around us. The lieutenant doesn't reply, but you can sense him tense up next to you. Look up at the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. Try to see beyond the shadows. What if I don't want to know what's up there? No, crab man, right? We gotta check the crab man out. Let's see. Oh no, are we gonna find something? Oh no. I feel like we're gonna find something I am not gonna like it. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. Uh, on the ceiling? Wait, on the ceiling? Is that, is that what's happening right now? On the ceiling? That's, um, it's getting spooky. On the ceiling? Yes. The darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. I don't see anything. I see some dust falling off. I don't see anyone up here. Follow the shadow's movements then. It's not a shadow anymore. Becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of an animal descends. Is it a dog? Officer, is there something up there? The lieutenant follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is you're seeing. Oh no. You've lost sight of it. Where did it go? I don't even know what it is. Prepare for an attack. Blink. Oh, someone is up you there. You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. There is someone up there. That's creepy. Super creepy. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. Tiago? Who's Tiago? Okay, stay there. I'm gonna check everything else out first. The bowl is filled with water. Live wire runs directly into it. Could these wires work as contact microphones? I'm gonna check the other side first and then we're going to go to you, all right? You kind of freak me out. I know you want to know why we're here, but it's also kind of weird that you're hanging like a spider monkey up there. Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tape spinning on empty. A portable Harman Walshie tape recorder. Is it possible it's recording something? Someone siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. In white, silver, and apricot faience, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced, and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Her innocence. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Kneel. No. Leave me alone, woman. Kneel. Um, why would I kneel? I guess she's the religious figure around here. How about no? Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you. Uh, 
No. As that bit of thought passes through your head, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder with three fingers. I'm guessing he feels very strongly about this. Let's, uh, let's do the same as him then. Make the same gesture. Your fingertips touch your chest four times. When it's done, you're still standing in the apricot-colored light of the window. The woman smiles her distant smile, unmoved, struck in half by the crack in the glass. Serves her right. She only cares about her sovereign's orb and her silk robes and get into the aerodrome on time to leave. So this is Dolores' day. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachot's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. He lowers his voice. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. What else do you know? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Lesetsa, they called them, the Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find the instigator here. Something else, perhaps? He looks at the machinery lying around. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? Are you a follower? Are you a follower of Deloreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are Delorean in origin. I didn't think it were spirituals. Uh, stroke your chin first. I don't like her, she looks like a lever. Uh, I didn't think it were spiritual. It's not spiritual, it's constitutional. Mm. The Delorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. But the way you conduct yourself seems very spiritual uh encyclopedia how did i know this was a mother of hum humanism let's do that first despite the damage you've done to yourself the title appears lodged in your hippocampus this is her innocence dolores day the innocence of humanism internationalism and the welfare state perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. I see. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still, and will haunt you forever as it haunts all men. What exactly is an innocence? The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world spirit. A ruler? More. An innocence is elected to office by the founding party a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an authentic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous, compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. I don't get it. Is one in office now? No, we are alone. Okay, when did she rule? 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi. She is, among other things, the innocence of inter travel and the connected world. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene La Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir La Clay. Also, that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Okay, what else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the Antidelorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. 
In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. The pale a costly, yeah. often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. What's this Pale thing I keep on hearing about? She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Wow, I guess. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. Wait, is there something supernatural in this world? That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. I want more. As did we all. The lands of the Mez and the Occident and even far away Supramwindi. Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. Her crowning? In a city called Advesperaskit in Vesper Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already her thereas, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. She must have been beautiful. I don't care how she looked. I don't care. It doesn't hurt me. She must have been beautiful. Oh yes. She looked like humanity's young mother. A perfect mother. Insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attaché of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. And then what? One of the men in this secret service killed her what 22 years later a young man who had come to suspect that dolores day was not entirely human but something else i mean if her lungs were glowing and there's not any supernatural thing in the world i guess that would be true but what is it then something that had walked in our midst watching us stumble for hundreds if not thousands of years until it decided to interfere interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. So you're saying she came from the pale, whatever this pale is? Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fouling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over 10 minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Was there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory or what remains of it. But. Although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day. Constantly surrounded by her therriers, she was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. What happened? The Mesk state tried to detach itself 
from Innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating inter-secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity. She sounds like a... I don't know if tyrant is the word, but she sounds like a tyrant. But at the same time, she's like regarded as the most holy of holies, uh, for lack of a better term. Suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. Huh. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Lieutenant Yefrater, you've stood there for over five minutes. Lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? She somehow connected the case? Glowing lungs, that's fucked up. Nothing, just looking around. She's beautiful, she's not human. <laughs> War criminal. She somehow connected the case. She's been dead for 300 years. I am almost a thousand percent certain she isn't connected to the case. Maybe not directly, but something about her is connected to the case. She t he takes his glasses off to clean them. None of this is, in fact. This church, the coast, this isn't a good place to get lost in. Okay, visual calculus, let's check it. A jigsaw of nice. broken shards falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. And a text. A light motif below them both. What shattered this mosaic? Unknown. Interesting. Also, this guy in the middle with the crown and whatever, uh, scepter and <laughs> something holding. It's got like huge glasses. What's up with that? A motor carriage, a gunshot, someone falling into it, or maybe just hooligans looking for something to break. Who is this older woman? That's the a woman? The scutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden right apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised oh. above. She herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. The motto, what does it say? Below both women, in luminous black letters. Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. Well, and that means what? And then, along the left side, après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. I don't speak French, you have to explain this to me. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This is the great light motif of humanism, a summary of the effect of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. I really need to know what this pale thing is. Lieutenant, this used to say after life, after death, after... Death, life again. After the world, the pale, after the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. 
No more, however. Why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected of boot leaking. Mm. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. I see. So what's the motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. Much more, what do you call this, direct? Cool. Not very feminine. I like the other one better. I like this. Puts the fear of God back in the... Uh, okay. Uh, cool. Not very feminine. Not at all. Step back. The mother of humanism towers above you. A wax painting on a cracked pane of glass. Nothing has changed in her expression. Turn away. Oh, I hear the wind. What's this thing? There's a radio, A machine right? stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. It also sounds very weird. A radio computer. And it's turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yes, but what is this strange thing? A radio computer. We have one down at the station. Oh, really? So this is this is not unusual? No, I don't know how to operate it or what it's used for. Let's go. This is the Ream Prefect radio computer. A model number RC7024. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. Such a bulky thing. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. Let me just investigate it. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. This is the machine's filament memory. Press play to access its contents. Play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no, it was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien seal like technology. Chill, Half-Life, chill. It's probably nothing big, but it is kind of creepy, not gonna lie. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on St. Brune. This is the East Insulin Indian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat, is this the personal log? This is a human interface. A retired person sitting behind a switchboard somewhere. What's the personal log? The filament you have inserted into the core. Uh, you mean that glowing thing with the tape on it that says uh, log to February, March? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Is this the personal log? Uh, yes. Good. Please repeat the password. I don't know the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Uh, let's see. I don't know the password. There's the police. Please open this. Uh, don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Okay. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Yeah, I've had that. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Let's try this again. Fortress accident. Uh, are you a machine or are you alive? Thanks, but I'm finished with this call. Goodbye, Fortress accident. She says as her voice disappears in the world static. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. What was that? I don't think that was human, but press print. 
Nothing happens. Okay, we got nothing. Okay, we need a password for this thing before we can do anything, huh? All right. Oh, oh, I should be walking. Money. Shoes. Good shoes. Better shoes. Empathy. Perception. Where's my perception at? Perception is at five. Empathy is at three. I think we're good. I could bring up my... I could bring up my, um... Empathy up a little bit, but we have no one to empathize with, so... No worries. What is this? What is this? I want to know what this is. A spider has spun its web around this wood-carved pillar. And this? A cracked pane of glass. Colorful. It came from the stained glass window. It still has letters on it. Okay. Before I talk to you, I want to see what's down here. Looks like there's pants. Process drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. Figure drawn in frost, depicting a deer. A scarf. Pain threshold. Where does this go? Oh, this probably goes around my neck. Inland Empire. Pain threshold. Let's see. Alright, it's your turn. Who are you? And what are you doing here? Is that a man? A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. Wait, what? The crab man. Who's there? There's the police. Show yourself. Say nothing. Be quiet for now. Let's say... Hmm. The, there's the police. Show yourself. The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry, everything's gonna be alright. You come to the right place. Wow, okay, not what I expected. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesk and a district in general. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking mesks in Rivershaw. The right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. Okay. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Yes. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. <laughs> I haven't drunk at all. Yeah, I guess I've, I have a bit of a problem, and it's been getting out of hand lately, but... I'm a policeman. I need to talk to you about police things. I don't know anything about alcohol use. Uh, I'm a policeman. I need to talk to you about police things. Oh, yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. You got it all under control, way. I could smell the control all the way over here. I haven't drunk anything recently. What are you talking about? I'm doing fine, thank you. Okay, fine. I'm struggling, but you don't need to lecture me. I know what to do. You don't know me. You don't know what it's like. There's something... Something white pursuing me. White and very sad. This conversation is making me uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. I'm doing fine, thank you. I know it's hard to admit that you got a problem. I was like you once. Couldn't take an honest look into my own heart and see I was in pain. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. <laughs> oh, Kim, don't do this to me. Look at these crazies. What is this shit? For some reason, I feel like I, uh, you have a point there. Adjust your tie. Who do you think you are? Some crazy guy under a roof? What is this shit? You know, alcohol is central to my identity. If I wouldn't drink, it just wouldn't be me. This is stupid, I don't even know what this is. That's all well and good, but we need to talk about the unlicensed occupation of ecclesiastic property. Uh, for some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. His voice echoes in the cold air of the church. Who are you? 
This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? Tis not an act, my liege. Saving perchance, he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot. Ah, uh, you must be the crab man. Never known myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. To be fair, it's more like a spider. If you're not a crab, then what are you? Sorry, you, were ju you just weren't moving like a human. Uh, hey, it's your neighbors who came up with this name, not me. I always thought of myself more like a flame, flickering along the rafters and beams. He pauses. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. You probably do. That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? Wait, did you also carve all those sculptures? Point at the nearest pillar. Yeah, did you carve those? Sure am. Whittling wood used to be something I just did to busy my hands. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. You got some nice curves going there, rubs your chin. Uh, seems a tad derivative. You're promoting the objectification of women in your with your reactionary depiction of female bodies. Honestly, I don't get it. All these figures look half finished. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. What were you before you became a crab man and woodcarver? I was in a gang way, mm. but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. So many people losing their memory, a certain portent of doom. I lost my memory too and it still haunts me. I lost my memory too, but I like it. It's like I get to create a whole new me, start again from scratch. You used to be in a gang, but you don't really remember? Sounds convenient. Convenience has got nothing to do with what goes on up there. He gazes up at the ceiling. There's a profound longing in that gaze. Like he wants to be one with whatever is up there, shrouded in darkness. Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago's my name. But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. Name's Harry. Extend your name for a greeting. Name's Harry Du Bois, and my place in the world is Lieutenant Double Your Fader. I don't do names either. Names are out. I don't care what m what mine is. Uh, don't do names either. That's not quite right. But you're getting somewhere. Any one of us could have been anything else. We are all one who sing the mother's glory. So, what are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. He nods towards the ceiling. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. This mother of silence, you mean her? What will happen once you drink from this perforation? I still don't understand what you're doing in this church. Are these yours, showing the scarf and shoes? Uh, what will happen once you drink from the perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. This mother of silence, you mean her? No, no, no. There's a new god in town, and she can be painted or sculpted because she has no limb or even a face. She is the end. Are you talking about the pale? She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. You sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Too gleeful, those words. He is lying. 
not to you, to his very own self. Faith is a kind of drug. I guess you have a point. Let's agree to disagree. Sorry for being insensitive. Sorry. Uh, let's move on. Faith is kind of a drug. I heard that before, Wei. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think. When's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover? Regretting what you did last night. Can't say I never had a hangover before. This guy has, though. Um, but... I think love might have been my drug of choice, and I think I'm still hung over from it. She took you for a good spin, huh? Mm. Don't worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. He looks at you gravely. The mother will eat all of you and never spit you out. Ooh, I'm not, I'm not really into war. Uh, just saying. Okay, well, let's agree to disagree. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. I still don't understand I what you- I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. I still don't understand what you're doing in this church. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Can you sing for me? Sing for me something. Uh, it doesn't really make sense for you to sing if she's the mother of silence. Singing is good. We should all sing a bit more. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for you to sing if she's the mother of silence. <laughs> I don't mean literal singing, Holmes. This is the mother of silence we're talking about. It's the singing of a burning heart. You may be thinking, but fire crackles. No, Holmes, that's the material that's burning. The flames themselves are without sound. How did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there? I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. Uh, are these yours? The scarf and the shoes? I think they were. A long time ago. I had to shed them like skins. To get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. He looks at the red clothing items in your hand, I see. Okay, I have other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. He responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Some ravers want to turn this into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside? Right? I see them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab. Probably scared of me. Do they have a reason to be scared? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. Though he used to. A long time ago. That's fine. So what do you think about the nightclub? Why not? <laughs> it wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there, imbibing. Mm. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. When you say imbibing, you're actually drinking. I see, I see. Might even be nice to have some company. Okay, if you don't mind. Uh, do you know where the other spooker is? Point the strange machines around you. Other spooker? Oh. Esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. Don't know, huh? The Aita is... Grandma? Wait, so there is another person living in this church? And it's a viejita? Uh, right, thanks. I'll see if I can find her. There's another person? No. I just call her viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. Or maybe not that young. H is just one of the many masks we wear. Wait, what if it's Ruby? It probably is Ruby. Did it ever seem to you like she was hiding here from something? The lieutenant seems to be thinking the same. He takes out his little notebook. You mean like a fugitive? He glances at an abandoned radio computer on the side of the nave, pulsing with light. Then he shakes his head. Why do you think so? No, man. Quite the opposite. 
I don't think she cared much about authority or anything else for that matter. Maybe only about her machines. Whose machines is this? I see. And where is she now? The lieutenant seems contented with the answer. I told you, Holmes. I don't know. But how can you not know when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. So you got nothing else to tell me? How she looks, what she does, who she is? I'm afraid not, S.A. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... He shrugs. Or search through her radio computer. Do you by chance have heard the password? Too many times, S.A. You need it for something. Yes. Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information. Especially in the name of public safety. I don't think you've done that before, Drama. What's with the S's? I'm doing a survey for passwords and passcodes. Identifying <laughs> regional trends in the interest of public safety, of course. Just tell me the password. Yes, it's for first-degree murder investigation Martinez. Honestly, I just want to break into a radio computer. See what's on it. Don't sweat, Evato. The password is afterlife death. Okay. What you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita Pequeña when I hear it. I gotcha. Okay, thanks then. I think we're done here, Essay. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation. I know, right? The guy was interesting. He minds his own business. Creepy? Yes. Uh, but otherwise, fairly cordial. I, I dig it. However... I'm still not sure whether we'll find our suspect here. Probably not, but we'll, we'll, we'll find something. Okay, what's this new thought? Oh, wow, I got a lot of points now. Uh, I kind of want to get rid of a Wompy Dom, Dom Center, but it's really helping. So maybe not. The new thing is Wasteland of Reality. 20 hours, minus two physical in instrumentation. My physical instrumentation is at three. I just hope I don't get into a fight. Uh, 20 hours though, that's like, that's a long time. Very long time to, to do that. Alcoholic, so this is gets rid of our alcoholism. Insomnia. You know, let's make you clean for real. Let's make you clean for real. Internalize. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Password. Wait, if he shed his shoes and scarves, is he completely naked? We can't we couldn't really see him. I hope not. That'd be weird. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated. Revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Okay. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good evening. Votre accident on Sandrun. This is the East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Let me try this again. I think I may have the right password for the personal log. Good. Please repeat the password. Afterlife death. Uh, a password? I'm really bad at passwords. Uh, afterlife death. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Okay. Votre accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Um, fortress accident. Sounds familiar. The company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. Oh, she actually will help us on this. Uh, you hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCF produces revolutionary interactive call in radio games. That's what the catalog says. Radio games. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. And what's that, this interactive call-in radio game? Any other questions? 
I guess she doesn't. She、uh, static drowns her response. I guess she doesn't know or she doesn't care. Uh, are you a machine or are you alive? No, I think she's alive. Are you a machine or alive, though? Yes, I am alive. I am seventy-four years old, and my name is Evon. Okay, just making sure, ma'am. I wasn't quite sure. I never have interfaced any of these things before. She repeats passwords, programming people in our own paradigm. <laughs>、uh, I see. Uh, Yvonne, my partner here tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. Okay. Uh, but where are you? But where are you? How did you know where I am? Yeah, where are you? Where? How do you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for the accident. Okay. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle. Surrounded by a wall of radios. Hopefully, it pays you well. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for you for the rest of the day. Okay, I'm done with you. Thank you. Sleep well for the rest of the day. She says as her voice disappears into a whirl of static. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated,、okay. Print. revealing the printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Read the printout. The first entry made on the fourth of February, fifty-one, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up, so I used the crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. Looks like you did it. The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. Fourth of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Do you think this log might be connected with the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. His eyes wander to the various machines around him. Well, you never know. Must read the second entry. Sixth of February, fifty-one. Had a little chat with the local fisherman. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See. Even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving.、Hmm. What was that about narcotics? This could prove to be interesting. Read the third entry. Seventh of February, fifty-one. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series, something、What? advanced. Why would she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the ground, inspecting it with his boot. Read the fourth entry. Eighth of February, fifty-one. Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. But at least the artists have their act together. Their qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers, though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Data loss seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed, and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading.、Uh, artists, programmers, Lexi, who are all these people? Her friends, colleagues. She must be quite educated if she knew how to set up all this machinery. Read the fifth entry. Twelfth of February, fifty-one. 
brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. Okay, so this is probably not um, Ruby, but still quite interesting. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. Read the sixth entry. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment, but I did discover a curious audio spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Yeah, we've checked it out. Is she talking about? The lieutenant looks to his right, towards the, towards the silence. Yeah, I know. 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real, and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence, with a diameter of approximately three meters. It seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? Probably, but what could it be? Look at the water basins behind you. The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. Read the eighth entry. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. That disco man must be a cell. Must be a cell. The girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. Read the ninth entry. March 51. A new two meter aux cable. Noodles, crackers, ping ping energy drinks, water, toothpaste, gum, also some canned air. Canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. I think that's her. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. You're not Ruby, are you? Suna the programmer. Oh, you're not Ruby. But you also look very ghastly. Uh, hello? We're right here? Breaking into my radio computer, I see. Uh, sorry, but we were kind of curious. We thought this might be connected to our case. Uh, who are you? She glares at you as she holds down the off button for several seconds, the machine reboots. Yes, you are breaking in, but not into her radio computer. You're a master circuit bender. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. I assure you I'm an expert circuit bender. I'm not breaking into your computer. I'm using it to access coalition military data links. <laughs> We're looking for a suspect in murder investigation. We thought they might be hiding here. We're here on a side case representing some music venue organizers. We're not breaking in. I'm pursuing a mysterious lead, searching for my lost identity. Uh, yeah, we thought they might be here. No one's hiding here. How about the guy upstairs? He's hiding here. She barely looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine whir back to life. It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. I haven't. We should talk to her. After she has rebooted the machine. Sure. Uh, how long? Are you, how long are you gonna take with that? What is it? Uh, the woman still hunched over the keyboard, gently illuminated by a purring machine. I didn't break anything, did I? Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? I didn't break anything, did I? No, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. It does not look like a big loss here. Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. 
I have over 16 years of programming experience and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. Okay, cool. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. She turns back to the terminal. Did she say over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. Have you seen the crab man? Have you seen anyone suspicious? A, a woman named Ruby? Why are there so many machines in this place? What are you doing in an abandoned church? How do you feel about demonic dance music? Uh, have you seen anyone suspicious? A, a woman named Ruby? What? No. No one's suspicious around here. Okay, she's focused. She has not seen her, sire. Tis true. Why are there so many machines in this place? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. I'm just curious. Why do you need an antenna? Why are you doing with the radio computer? What are those bowls of water doing? Everything. Uh, why do you need an antenna? I use the AR1 as my RAM prefix processing unit. RAM prefix? That's your radio computer, right? Mm-hmm. And the antenna, it's processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? I... not really. I know a little. I don't really know much about anything in this world, but not really. Alright. Well, all radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. Uh, what's on air? On the front. The unified front of radio waves. Licensed and controlled by Lintel in the East in Salindic region. Okay, impatient much? It's all around us. That's what on air means. She waves her hand. Like love. And the AR1, good antenna? I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage and the operation has been surprisingly stable. She stops to think. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Okay. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. Turns back to the terminal. What are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. Yeah, working on what? The machine seems almost alien with its pulsing core. The light casts in her face in a strange shadow. Again, working on what? Could you... Could you just... Shh... For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. I'm sorry, but I'm really curious. It's not just rudeness. It really is hard to concentrate on whatever she needs to do. And you're not helping. Okay, what are the bowls of water over there for? They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? I... Thanks. I wasn't going to. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Isn't the computer made for government use? How do we get to this conclusion? So you do know something about computers. You're right. Prefect is used mostly by the government peeps. She looks up, almost proud of you. And you work for the government? No, I don't. So why do you have it? Because I needed something good for my investigation and Reim's Civic is widely agreed to be below all standards. So I had to upgrade. I see. She inhales sharply before answering in a single breath. Besides, owning a Reim Prefect isn't such a big deal anymore. <laughs> you say you need an upgrade. I, I feel that. Ten years, you need an upgrade then. No. Actually, it is kind of a big deal. You don't see Ream prefects in every police department, for example. That's because we're cheap! Uh, how did you get your hands on it? I know a friend of a friend who used to freelance for the Coalition. I was actually aiming for the military-grade Reim Rational series, but couldn't find one. Okay, she says nonchalantly, scratching her ear. Prefect is mainly based on the same technology as Reim Civic, so it's kind of a ripoff. But it does have better compatibility with newer antenna models, so I won't complain. Right, I'll try not to touch anything. Next question. Great. Why are you in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? Yes, I do. There's a hint of amusement in her tired eyes. They're bloodshot. She really hasn't been getting much sleep lately, has she? 
I need to make sure you're not hiding anyone. I'm a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. You're, uh, occup you're occupying public space. I need to know what you're doing here. There have been complaints from your neighbors. Ah, I'm a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. She says ready to stand her ground. What research? I wasn't going to throw you out. I'm looking for the location of a 2 millimeter hole in the world. That's a really small hole. Why? Wait, what? Yeah, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. Okay, she stares at the burnished antenna on the nearby table. A hole in the world, what does that mean exactly? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. There's something frantic about her as she locks her gaze with you, shining eyes like pearls. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbing the conversation, waiting for your answer. Easy. You measure it by the world around it. Hold on a moment. Does this mean we're now living in a world that has holes in it? You mean by collecting data on its surroundings? You measure it by collecting data on its surroundings. On that which exists. I can't even understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measure it. I don't know. I'm not here for some science. I just want to solve a murder. Uh... By measuring the surroundings, I guess. Exactly. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Uh, do you have any idea where this hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, uh, eyes trying to pierce the pitch black heights above, but without much success. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark. Most of the tower disappearing into the shade. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe, <laughs> but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the Crab Man lives. I know. You don't think Crab Man might be somehow responsible here? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't know why that would be a thing, but you said that the research isn't going well. Why not? Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Uh, but I'm curious. That's all I want to know about that scary two millimeter hole in the world for now. Thank Great. you. Great. Thanks. Uh... How do you feel about Adonic dance music? What? I hate it. Okay, well, we, we're gonna have to tell the guys outside about that then. She, quint she, she squints her eyes. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Have you listened to it? Like, actually listened? Yeah. Like, all the time. My tent neighbors don't really ease up with their partying, do they? She pulls a face that looks absolutely scathing. Oh, you know about them. Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right. But how do you feel about a club or a dance music? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? Yes. I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. What do they want to build then? I know it's a drug den. Take a guess, why don't you? Youth center would be nice, petting zoo, uh, a place for animals, maybe some community uh, space to help the elderly. I'm still convinced they want to establish a nightclub for adult dance music. They said it's their dream. I can't believe they got you so easily. Mm. Go have another talk with those up and coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. I already talked to them about that. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. 
Right, I'll let you walk in peace. Okay, well... I'm just gonna walk out. I probably should be walking. I... well, it's 8 o'clock at night, no sign of Ruby. I think I wasted a little bit too much time at the church here. But you know what? It, to me, it's very interesting. Just because... I want to know about the pail. I have a feeling this has something to do with the pail, but I don't know why. Wait, that's the long way. Let's go this way. It's shorter. Okay, we gotta talk to you guys. We already talked to you about the drug thing, right? Okay, let's talk. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? About the church, I checked it out. And? What happened? I talked to Crabman. Oh man! Who is he? What did you think? Seemed okay to be honest, very spiritual. Uh, he gave me his odd lecture on alcoholism before rambling on and on about mother's love. You were right, a true narcomaniac. The way he climbs is terrifying. And to be honest, very spiritual. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Just preaching, praying, from the looks of it. He clearly enjoys physical activity. <laughs> Guy climbs like a freak. There's something sinister going on un uh, under the building's roof. I think he's got getting high or something. Uh... I don't know, maybe he's getting high. What do you mean? I'm not sure. I'm just telling you what it felt like. Didn't sound like a sober man's talk. He must be getting visions up there. No matter. Is he gonna be a problem? Paranoid young man mumbles gruffly. Yeah, Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we gonna do about him? Nothing. These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Of course, he's a problem. He's a crab man. Uh, he keeps himself physically active, thinks spiritual thoughts, and doesn't drink. Who am I to evict such a person? As far as I can tell, he's not going to leave. He'll climb around up there, and guys, you'll never catch him. Actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? I mean, you're just going to have to live with him. Don't worry, I don't think he really gives a damn about you or anyone else. Uh, yeah. You're just gonna have to live with him. I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Yeah! Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? Uh, I was using the mainframe when Suna, the former lead programmer, the... F Fortress accent appeared. Yeah. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She did not like that Donut Dance Club. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. He drops the hammer back, back in the toolbox. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! She made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. I could go for another try, bring down the hammer of the law. No, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. I don't think that's going to work. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's odd. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? She absolutely does not. Really, truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries, we'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, I what do you think? I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. Excellent! Good luck, my friend. We're really doing this? He smiles wide like a replica of his friend with a large head. Goodbye, officer. 
Ah, uh, jeez. Okay, I wasn't thinking they'd be so insistent about this. But let me see what SL has to say. The shaggy head girl. So you talk to my associates, right? Uh, Are you going to help us? Let's see. With the church, I mean. Can't say I gotta ask questions first. Shoot. Sosius tried to use me to set up a drug lab. I'm guessing you knew of this plan. I did, and I'm sorry. For what it's worth. Which isn't much. Mm, she doesn't seem surprised. This is why I didn't go into the tent. Typical delinquency. The lieutenant looks at the ocean, squinting his eyes. You don't get to choose your posse. They choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I tried to talk Andre out of it. Should have tried harder. Misleading cop is no joke. Don't care, I'm local. I just want you to know that I know about the plan. Misleading cop is no joke. I know. I should have been able to control them. And I will in the future. I promise. May I ask? What did you tell them? Do what you will with your dance club plans, just no drug labs, please. Thank you. I'll get them under wraps, I promise. Okay, the others told me you went inside the church. What did you see in there? Oh, that. You're not going to believe me. There's no point in me telling you. She's less prone to blurt it out, crab man, than the others. Uh, we'll see. Go ahead and tell me. Okay. I went in and I saw a woman next to one of those machines there. Noid calls it a mainframe. She was dressed like someone who's been raised by their grandmother. You know, strange old clothes. Had this absent expression. Didn't say anything. Just stood still. Go on. And then, you know... Right behind her, a man crawled down the wall. Upside down like a crab. Down the church wall. I think the woman didn't even know he was there. He was completely silent. He stopped right before he got to the floor. Then just hung there like that, looking at me. Right at me. I fucking turned around and walked out. End of story. You know, that's perfectly fair. I hope anyone would be creeped out by that. Like a crab, you say? The lieutenant nods, his face is stone. I saw him. I saw the crab man. You saw him? Does it mean that you went in there? Did you see <laughs> the other spooker, the one in Grandma's clothes? I did see both of them, yes. Good, so you believe me. You should go tell this to Andre. He'll know what to do next. Uh, let's see. I'd like to know more about your associates. My associates? I haven't got much to say about them. Okay, just uh, answer the question, please. Sorry. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. Hmm. To the cops. What about you? Tell me something about yourself. Uh huh, okay, maybe I'll ask about this later. How about you? Tell me about yourself. Me? I'm a silver bird. What's a silver bird? Don't know what makes you think it'll be any different later, but. Okay, well, I'm guessing uh, this empathy thing has to do with it. Tell me more about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed to become, like, a club for anodic dance music, like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisium. Except that, yeah. She looks at the old wooden church in up in the poles as a mean wind comes in bellowing in. The six-story structure lets out a doleful shriek. The floorboards are twisting, and the shooting beams are slowly cracking, like bones. Far east of the Golden Delta, beyond the industrial port, there is a black patch of unlit coast with the smallest creatures on the ice. There will never be a club for anonic music here. Not in a million years. Mmm. What is anonic dance music? You know, anodic, cathodic, music that's made with electronic instruments. Oh, that's it? It sounds like EDM. <laughs> uh, like what? Synthesizers and tape consoles. Microcomputers, too. Anything that uses electricity, but isn't guitars. Also found sounds. Stuff like that. Okay, enough about the church, then. I have another question. Go ahead. I guess we're done here. So it's basically just EDM. This world's version of EDM, whatever. Okay, let me just see if I can talk to her again. I mean, the compromise would be she finishes her research and they can move in. 
but we're not gonna kick her out. Yeah, I'm running now. Yes, what is it? Uh, let's see. Have you, um, what if he didn't have to leave? I talked to Andre, he wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. She replies, her expression unchanged. Hold on, you don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. Okay, got your message. Good. Convince her to con copy with the raid ravers. Research not going well, suggestion is very low. Um, my suggestion right now is crap, so probably not great to try to do that. Have you seen the crab man? No. But you know he's around. Yes. He's seen you. And? And the crab man has seen you. Okay, it's probably not a big deal then. No, you're right. I'm not. Okay, well, have fun with that. Okay, so nothing else here. Interesting side quest. I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen there. It is almost 2100. I wonder if we can, like, check out a little bit more before we have to wrap up for the night here. Nothing here. There's another church here that we know of, and looks like... What is this? I can't read that. The chain trails off into the ocean to who knows where. Rusty gears used to turn the whole machine. What is this? The sparrow has been recently discarded. It still smells of fuel oil. Oh, what's this? The building before you housed the engine. Must have been a big one. Engine of what? An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind ah. has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this thing, anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. You used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot up the coast. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. This might be it. Could this structure have been used to take the shot? From here to the whirling? I can't see how. The church is in the way. Yeah, I, uh, I, I see what you're saying. Red check cannot be retried. Ooh, I think I'm gonna have to save that for a special day. Do we have anything that increases that? Probably not, right? Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to save that for a special day. If I open it, I feel like we're gonna find some really nice stuff, but we only get one chance. White polo shirt. Increased rhetoric, but no empathy. Because we're too snobbish for anything, apparently. <laughs> oh, here's another trap. Right, there's another trap near the whirling, right? A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. Look around. The reeds sway in the coastal breeze. They seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Okay, let's look at the trap. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. Uh, let's keep going. The next one is the lucky one. How are you enjoying the cardio, Lieutenant? I'm quite enjoying it myself. Again, I want to make it absolutely clear I don't really believe in pla uh, <laughs> phasmids. The phasmid exists, okay? Uh, how are you enjoying the cardio? Always up for a good job. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? He smiles and raises his collar. It's windy. It is uh, quite interesting that you follow me everywhere. It's like, I know this is a game, but for Kim to be following me every everywhere, that's, uh, that's something else. Cigarette butts cleaned away under a rock. Brand Tia Morundi. Wait, there's a lighthouse. Hold up, hold up. Someone's made a campfire here. Who... 
Who could this be? Oh, wait, hold up. You take a mental note to your Marunti. Uh, seems important somehow. Rusted control box for the radio relay tower. Ladder's too rusty to climb. The seer has eaten it away. Relay tower coordinates, boat traffic in the bay, barely. Okay, so where are we? What's the map say? Okay, there's a lighthouse, there was the church, we passed both. Um, there was a boardwalk where the Ferris wheel was supposed to be. We saw all that. Where could she be hiding? I was hoping we'd find her by now, but... There's nothing. Tiny inlets there off in the far distance where the posts trail forward. Okay. No ruby. We searched everywhere. The only other thing I could think of is she might be up in the... What do you call this? She might be up at Land's End or whatever that island is. The place where no one... Like the place where no one can um, go to without a boat. It's gonna take me two days to get my own boat. Where else could she be? Okay, these guys are gone. The once bright mural towers above you. Shivers. Let me see if I have anything for shivers. At least no shivers. Um, the marriage right now, but. Oh, here's a shivers. Do I have anything else? Nope. Oh, here's another shivers. How much does that help? The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Fell electrical, R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Uh... Reconstructed execution. My shivers is at. Where is my shivers? Five. Hmm. Let's the once I mean, it is a white shed. Towers above you, saying, Feld electrical, R and D. Tomorrow. Is just a whisper away. It is a white check. Let's give it a shot. Suddenly, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead. No rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down or gone behind a corner. You only hear distant waves washing the coast. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. Sh uh, why was I even attempting to do here? She could be anywhere. How do we find her? How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. The lieutenant sighs, then gets a hold of himself. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We've already talked to the cryptozoologists. Working with them might give us a good excuse to run around, give us some structure. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. I guess. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula, ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. Okay, and if that fails and we don't find her? Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bunkers, tomb drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. He looks behind him at the dark red box crumbling behind across the chasm. Walk the coast. The old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. Sure. Buckle up and raise your collar. This search is going to be wet and cold. Wet and cold, you say? All right, well, I don't have any other leads, so... What am I wearing? Empathy, hand-eye coordination, sure. Okay, well, we are out of leads for today. 
Um, nowhere else for me to go, really. Let's go ahead and check that last trap. Uh, well, we have two more traps, but... Let's see if we can talk to anyone else around here. Hey, I got a drink for you. Tequila Sunset. I think I found your jacket. Ah, tequila. I knew you'd come through. That's fucking great, man. Yeah, you can have it. It's kind of nasty. Let me see. What? This isn't my jacket. My jacket was beautiful. This is fucking filthy. What am I supposed to do with this? Um, what do you expect? You left it outside for a week. I'm not taking a disgusting pile of hobo rags. I may be in an irrecoverably decaying orbit, but I've still got standard. Sure, but does it look the same? Either bring it back the way it was before, or find a dumpster to burn it in. Okay. You know, despite the guano, it looks like the jacket itself is stain resistant. It may just need a good scrubbing. I guess we'll give this to the washer lady. She can deal with that. Uh, I want to hear your story about your name again. Got any more stories? I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. He spins the bottle in his hand. Not a single drop of liquid remains. I got a poison pilsner. Not much, but it will do. He grabs the bottle from your hand and uncorks it immediately. The tale I'm about to tell you is an urban legend particular to Martinez. Oh, this could be good. That said, I first heard it from a former bicycle courier in Koran. There are many variations on the basic story, and the details often conflict. What everyone agrees on is that nobody knows the exact nature or identity of the phenomenon. Okay. Are you telling the story of the headless? Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. <laughs> <clears throat> Summer of 44. 17 year old Gertrude Hett is walking home from a late shift at the harbor. It's almost midnight. She stops for a cigarette near the canal. The streets are warmed by a southerly breeze. The lights of a passing motor carriage bloom and fade in the distance. In the harbor's dark, her cigarette is a beacon, dancing alone. The image comes to you effortlessly, as though you'd walked the same streets yourself a thousand times. Our heroine finds herself enjoying the peace and quiet the canal provides. He looks up to the skies as if searching for peace himself. What she doesn't know is that her peace is about to be shattered. From behind her comes the clattering of hooves. Startled, she turns around, and what does she see? A horse? Well, yes, but it's the man on the horse that's of interest here. A man... The pause is long and dramatic. With no head on his shoulders. Wearing a found tracksuit, searching for the legendary found cap that went missing. When he lost his head. Wait, I have a found cap. <laughs> wait, wait, that's not, that's not right. Wait, I have the found cap. Uh, wait, I thought the headless found rider rode a bull. Whoa, that sounds pretty implausible to me. Super spooky. I thought it was a bull. I thought that he rode a headless pig. The Lieutenant says with a little smirk. <laughs> well, there are many versions of this story. The most peculiar of which has the headless found rider riding on the back of another headless man. Eh, that sounds pretty impossible to me. If I hadn't lost my keys that one time, I'd agree with you. But, life is a cruel mistress. Point taken. Gertrude Hett may have been the first to witness the headless found rider, but she wasn't the last. Oh no. Tell him about the two feminists by the locks. Two feminists by the locks? Fuck, Rosemary, they were dating. <laughs> no one said they were feminists. Everyone always misremembering this stuff. Oh, okay. Hmm. This wouldn't be the Deponte Delgado case, would it? What? You know it. Ah. Huh. I've read the case file. But please, go on. Right. <clears throat> Early autumn of 46. Ulla Deponte and Eva Delgado 
are fishing near the waterlock long after the sun has set. The wind picks up. A sky already dark now blackens. Water starts falling from above. The first cold rain of the season. Two women stand on a small outcropping of rocks. One of them is wearing a purple raincoat. Thin lines reach out from the rods into the sea. Small droplets start appearing on the surface with increasing frequency. The women are caught in the downpour. They act quickly. Eva gathers the rods whilst Ulla turns around to reach for the tackle box. When she sees something, her shriek is so violent that the residents of the nearby apartment building believe lightning has struck. But there is no lightning. Only a heavy downpour and the silhouette of the headless Falm Rider looming on the horizon. Ulla makes a run for the shore, but Eva slips on a wet rock and disappears into the cold, cold canal with nary a sound. Her body is never recovered. The man falls ominously silent for a moment, and he looks you straight into the eye. What did the case file say? Naturally, Ula de Ponte became the prime suspect in the disappearance of Eva Delgado. De Ponte maintained that it was the so-called headless fallen rider and that she ran fearing for her life. He adjusts his glasses. During the investigation, it became apparent that there was a love triangle, ah. the third party being some small-time businessman. I don't remember the exact details. The leading theory was that an argument broke out on the jetty and De Ponte pushed Delgado into the canal, then cooked up this stupid cover story. Was she arrested? No. She committed suicide before she could be taken into custody. They found her in the bathroom with a rifle, her face slowly peeling off the ceiling. Ooh. Not a pretty scene. I can't imagine. Man, that's some grisly detail. Oh well. Here's to another case closed. He takes a hearty swig from his bottle. Anyway, that's the story of the headless foul rider. Pretty uh, crazy, huh? Eh, uh, who was the headless foul rider before he died? Well, Tequila, that's part of the legend. No one knows for sure. There are a couple of possibilities, though. Some say he was an undercover cop who blew his cover and got beheaded by the vicious gang he had infiltrated. Now he rides, searching for his lost found cap, plotting revenge. Well, I have it. What does that say? Others claim he was a professional jockey who veered off course during a steeplechase, ended up in somebody's backyard, and got decapitated by an exceptionally taut clothesline. Personally, I think he was just some guy who hanged himself from a really tall tree, and the fall was so violent that his head came clean off. Coincidentally, at that exact moment, a horse <laughs> happened to pass under him, and his beheaded corpse mounted it, where it remains to this day. But then, no one really knows. That's a little bit more unbelievable, but okay. For some reason, this does strike you as the most plausible theory of them all. Really? Really? I don't believe it. I've got a hunch if that was the undercover cop. I want revenge too. I bet he was a jockey. I've got to agree, your theory sounds the most plausible. None of these sound plausible, to be honest. <laughs> Like you could do better, Tequila. I mean, I got nothing, but they don't sound good. Anyway, to each his own. You want to hear any other stories? I've already seen some weird shit on this case. I had this jockey and a tracksuit fits right in. Hard to argue with that, I suppose. Yeah, we got the crab mana, after all. That's the reality situation for you. You think you got a handle on it, then blam! It throws some wild shit at you. Uh, that's why it's critical to stay well hydrated. I see that you took a long swig and smile. Uh, that's nothing. I got an even crazier story. Want to hear it? Yeah? Why don't you go eat shit, Tequila? <laughs> There's no way you know a better one than that. Actually, you're right. Nothing comes to mind. Damn right it doesn't. Mm. So why don't you just shut up and leave it to the master? Oh, just a moment ago you were like, oh no, now I'm a storyteller. And now you're like, I'm the master. Come on. Okay, whatever became of the Headless Farm Rider? No one knows. Some say he stalks Martinez to this day. 
and can be seen near the canal when the clock strikes midnight. Ooh. Midnight, huh? I guess I'll have to check it out. He makes a spooky gesture with his free hand. He won't, though, because it's just a stupid legend. Well, we could try. Oi! I saw him one night when I was right shit faced. Yeah, that's be that's because he wore shit faced. That's why. Uh, got any more urban myths? I actually do have one, the strangest of them all. But I'll need to fortify myself before I can tell that one. Okay, one more drink then. Do you have anything to fortify old Doom Spiral? Mm. Tell me you got some story juice. I don't have any on me right now. If you find any, I'd be extremely grateful. Okay, later then. Okay, so I think uh, we have... One... Oh, lady, can you watch something for me? The old woman still sits in her chair, continuing with her chores. As she does so, she quietly hums to herself. The buzz of electric lights blends together with the slow rumble of the ocean waves at night. There's a gap where the name of that song should be. You should ask her about it right now. You're still up? Yes. I can't really sleep anymore. Only a few hours a night. It happens when you grow older. Really? She sloshes the water in the bucket around it for a bit. My suggestion is don't. Don't grow any <laughs> older than you already are. That's old enough. What's troubling your mind? <laughs> Man, if we could stop aging, that would be nice, right? Right. Uh, what's the song you're humming? A lullaby my mother used to sing. I sang it to my kids, too. It's an old Samaran children's song. What's it called? Surrender to the night. She replies, slowly rocking back and forth. That's kind of grim for a children's song, even uh, if it is a lullaby. It sounds nice. Yes, it does. I found this jacket. It's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Sure. Thank you. Hell yeah. Wow, Volition. I think that's the first time I've ever seen you interject. <laughs> I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. Uh, the lieutenant says, rubbing his chin. Uh, not chin. His thigh? What? Yeah, I'll wait. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Sure. Merci. I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that field. I hope you take better care of it than its last owner. Yeah, I'm off then. Thank you. Well, I wasn't expecting to get this done right away. But here you go. Here's your jacket. Tequila Sunset. Here's your jacket. My jacket? Yeah, the one you had me clean the sh uh, seagull shit off of. A look of consternation crosses the man's face. He looks at you, then at his bottle, then back at you. What the fuck are you talking about, Tequila? So you're saying this isn't your jacket? Falm? That's medium concept stuff, not my style at all. I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe you should lay off the booze. It's fucking with your head. Then what kind of jacket did you get? It becomes abundantly clear to you how this man managed to lose his keys, business, friends, and girlfriend. Explain it to me, Logic. Because I think it needs to be hammered in. I'm calling it. It's neurological. Your loss? I'm keeping the jacket. I went through some dark shit to get this for you. Take the fucking jacket. Nope, I'm keeping it. That shit is so medium concept, I wouldn't touch it with a stick. But yeah, okay. I'm sure it looks great on you. Well, oh, thank you. It's an okay jacket, if you are into that look. Okay, well, be seeing ya. Okay, let's step aside for a second. I have something I want to talk about. Sure. What is it, Kim? I've been meaning to have a little chat with you. About your sense of style. My style? What's wrong with it? 
It's just, well, you look more like a high-flying businessman than a police officer. Oh, I just thought that this was how professional people were supposed to dress. That's not quite what I was going for. Then maybe you should change your look. You know the expression, the clothes make the man? The right outfit in the right situation can make all the difference in the world. Okay, you're a shark dressed man. We could be style buddies. I'm not taking style tips from someone who dressed like a mega binoclard. <laughs> What's a mega binoclard? I'm not taking style tips from someone who dresses like a washed up tip top racer. Uh. But what's a binoclar? Let's go with that. Yes, and this mega binoclar knows how to sew a lapel and center a back vent. Okay, the lieutenant faces one eyebrow at you. That's why his clothes fit so well. Okay. So if you want to wake up next to anyone other than Commodore Red, you might do well to take notes. Okay. Anyway, we should probably get back to the case. Let's go. What's wrong with my outfit? Kim, this is fairly respectable. What are you talking about? It's got good stats. Bomb. Oh, minus one to drama, but half light and pain threshold goes up. Why? Yeah, this one's actually pretty bad. Guy's right, this is actually pretty bad. Let's. Minus one empathy. No, really. What the hell is Polo? <laughs> what the hell is Polo? Good question. Even I don't know. My impression of polo shirts uh, is basically cotton with a button up, short sleeve, pretty important, and honestly, why? I don't understand why. Another trap. This trap's not too hard to spot. Once you know what to look for, keeping it hidden has not been a priority for the cryptozoologist. Let's look around. The reeds bend forlornly toward the water. Some tufts have been crushed. The broken stalks sickly pale against the darkness. In the east, the city center hums to you. The constant, distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. And there's that cold again. Always the cold. Uh, reach for the trap. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Well, there's one more. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we're done. His face is red from the cold sea air. He crouches to catch his breath. One more time, I must dress. <laughs> Getting tired? No, no, I'm fine. I didn't mean to complain, it's just... Yeah, don't worry about it. it it's, a, it's a bit of a walk. How many points do I have? Wow, that's a lot of points. The encyclopedia passive has been helping out really well. Okay, let's... Let's huff it to the last... What do you call this? The last trap? And... I guess we'll have Kim go back to the inn. Sounds appropriate enough. Alright. Let's see if there's anything here. This is the last of the traps. The one Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. Okay, let's look around. The reeds hiss and shake in the darkness. That has settled over the abandoned camp. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out. You feel strange, somehow. Uh, reach for the trap. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. Wait, what? Are we really gonna find something? No locus. No phasmid either, but still. It's empty. Morel didn't leave it empty either. Your voice echoes on the coast, carried by a gust of cold wind. Look closer. Well. The bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little untidy. Messier than the others. Like someone or something picked the trap up and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Actually, I do get the feeling that someone or something may have messed with the trap. 
But what if it was the Phasmid? What if it ate them and got out? Yeah, it probably wasn't the Phasmid, but still, Borel needs to know. You're right, but they still need to know. You know, I'm guessing whoever is picking up the, the locust, uh, picked up the locust to eat them. Probably food, because they couldn't find any other food. Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual entomologist, or someone else is sabotaging them. I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. Uh, yeah, it probably wasn't the facet, but still, Morel needs to know. We did, sort of, promise to tell them, didn't we? He seems to regret the fact. A cold gust of air dries your sweaty face, and you look to the dark shadow, the felled building in the distance, drawing you to it. What a strange sensation. Once this is done, should you try to ask again? I guess we could. What's this can? I don't think I remember seeing it. Oh, money. Uh, sure. Let's try the building really quick. Also, I probably should equip some stuff with that. Alright. Let's go to that building. Anything? The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. 17% uh, with five shivers and all the other checks. It's not great, and we can't really retry it, I don't think so. A breeze, Didn't think like so. a quiet sigh, moves over you. The cool air breaks across your body. It brings the salt of the sea into your lungs. Go to the children of the big sea. What the hell was that? The wind rushes away, leaving you where you were, on the rotting boards of the felled building. Are you t asking me to talk to the kids? Officer, are you okay? It looked like we lost you for a second. I think I need to talk to some kids in the village. Hmm when you're ready. Okay. I mean, it was a failed roll, but... Maybe it might be into something? Onto something? Let me see what the kids have to say. I think uh, they're still, they'll still be around. Even this late. I mean, I, ha I don't have any more leads at this point. I may as well try everything. They're probably inside. Let's check. Door is closed for the day. Time to put the kids to sleep. Okay, we'll talk to them tomorrow. We'll talk to them tomorrow. I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit... Okay. Uh, What's this? Seems the walker was either very confused or very drunk out of his mind. That was me. Don't worry about it. I know what happened. <clears throat> Hey, I got something to ask you. Boots. Everything's still cool here, officer. Leave for now, check the stuff. I got money. The speakers below are banged up and worthless. The sneakers triumph over them. They're the star of the show here. Mmm. Minus one encyclopedia, but reaction speed and hand-eye coordination go up. Yeah, sure, why not? And we have more than enough now. Super cool! Now the premium lifestyle is yours, officer. Yeah, I mean, you made bank on that. And it might be helpful. The sneakers seem to vibrate in your hands with an almost mystical energy. Okay, I'll get the speakers now, too. The junk is yours, officer. Happy listening! Try not to hurt your ears with that Samaran garbage. Sure. Uh, let's see. Wow. We would get 30 from this? I, even if we don't use it, this is big money right here. <laughs> we, we don't exactly make money back from buying the shoes, but we make money back from buying this. It's something. 
It's something. You keep coming back. That's good, officer. Eh, you got nothing good though. Except for those shoes. Shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. What? Nope, nope, nope. You got nothing good for me. All right. Uh, let's call the the Inside, station. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft. This is precinct fifty-seven. How may I assist you? I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death. An identified middle-aged man, height 170 to 75 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. It looks like he slipped, fell through the, a hole in the boardwalk and hit his head against a metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? Uh, no, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. She repeats. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old uh, leather jacket with a bright blue lining. Found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Jemin? Uh, Majin? Good. You have a lead? Yes. Do you and Luton Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? Assign it, please. Assign it to someone else, Alice. We've got enough on our plate. Great. I'll give it to your colleagues. You don't have to worry about the case anymore. We'll send our officers to take away the body. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Okay, we're done. Is there anything done. else I can do for you? Uh, no. We're done. Thank you. 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see... All right. That's one thing down. Let's see how much money we can get for the bottles. Let's see... Bottles. Oh, it's this way. The tear machine stands. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. 1.1 real. Woohoo. It's something, but it's also a lot of bottles. Okay. That stuff is still happening over there. Let's uh, go ahead and check what's happening here. Okay. Hardy is there. Wait, is this the guy who we were talking to? Hi, gendarme. Oh. Another rendezvous. Hi. Hi, hi. So what brings you here? Uh, what are you doing here? Tell me about that muscular type who came to investigate the crime. I met your Sunday friend. You did? And how did you like him? You were right. He was magical. Magically bu bureaucratic. I didn't like him as much as I like you. I didn't. He's a government official. I don't trust governments. Eh, uh, it was magical. Magically bureaucratic. I told you, he can be very useful. I guess that's the charm of powerful people. Who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. Okay, return where? To his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclay. Still, his coming and going brings some life to the village. I see. He breathes in and keeps his lungs filled for a moment before letting it out. Or is it just money? I don't know. Uh, what are you two? Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. What does it mean? What does it mean, a Sunday friend? <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. Is that even a friend? It is. Okay. On Sundays. Okay. Uh, why was he staying at your place in the middle of the night? He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. He waves gently with his cigarette holding hand. Okay. I don't want to talk about other people. I want to talk about you. Hmm? What about me, gendarme? Uh, what are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I live here. My room is upstairs. This is where I'm going to go down in history. I'm going to sing karaoke! <laughs> I'm here to kick some ass and solve a case uh, I'm working on. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm going to sing some karaoke. 
Really? Well, I look forward to that. Okay, uh, tell me about the muscular guy who was investigating the crime. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. What'd you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. And he believed you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about your friend? What friend? The Sunday friend. No. I don't think it came up. What do you look like? Muscular. Handsome. Strong. Like one of those military types. Oh, those guys. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Besides the muscular, do you have any other identi identifying traits? Oh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. Probably was a merc, actually. Uh, he turns his eyes upwards in recollection. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely. Scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. Ooh. Thanks for the information. Sure. Anything else on your mind? Uh, no, that's it. Bye-bye, gendarme. Thank you for that. That was helpful. Hey, what you guys doing? It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Okay. Her, not you. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Uh, just doing my job, ma'am. It was a truly epic long distance trek. It was just on my way while I was working the case. Basically, also a cryptozoologist now, and it was on the way. Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. Oh. It's a tie. Mesk in origin. The pin is an antique. Quite special. She hands you a thin ribbon held together by a silver bird skull. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. Be not afraid. <laughs> you could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid, but the phasmid, of course, is more important. Y you never told me you've seen the phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. Ramblings? Nonsense. Your description of the phasmid is the most precise I've ever heard. But darling, I didn't even get the size of it right. You were a child, my dear. Really. It's extraordinary what you were able to describe. Now go on. Tell our friend about it. He's proven his interest in the field. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Really, Kim? Well... It was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden... What happened? I looked up, and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I'd never seen anything like it. The reeds turned into a creature. She had no fear, just surprise. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee-deep in mud, looking around me. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk, and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys. That sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on a date. Can you imagine? She tells me a story, and it's the most detailed report of the Insulindian phasmid I've ever heard. The sounds. She told me it hissed. It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. The way it moved, 
the color. How some of its limbs were white, like marble. It matched perfectly with what I know from other accounts. It was amazing. He breathes excitedly. I'm guessing this is why you married her? If it weren't for Lena, I might have given up hope years ago. It's no exaggeration to say that she restored my faith in my profession. Uh, its limbs are white? Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported, along with beige, where the camouflage ends. How big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. Maybe you imagined it. How could she? Who imagines this? She didn't know about the phasmid. This is the main thing here, what makes it a confirmed sighting. She had no previous knowledge of the insect. So she couldn't have made it up or imagined it. Okay. That's true, yes. I'm almost certain neither my mother nor my grandmother knew of it. It was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena. She lowers her voice, imitating a boy. You trying to tell us you saw the Insul Indian phasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here. <laughs> they just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming. But I saw it. Kim, what do you think of this? I thought it was a wonderful story, man. He closes his nose and gives a simple smile. Okay, he's just let it go. Thank you for sharing this with me. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It uh, was just... Let's see. Such I'd... an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. Maybe you could, should convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids. Eh, maybe not right now. We have one other business to do here before we go back to sleep. Can I help you? God, I found a new bird for the whirling. What is this thing? The man takes a stuffed bird. It's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. What? The interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. He inspects the bird somewhat suspiciously, then mellows. Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm gonna go with thank you. He hesitates. <laughs> uh, understand me so. This was mostly about the fucking cardio. Massive cardio here. You'll live till 90. Or you get a heart attack from running. <laughs> I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. It's not actually about that. But he liked it. Guard, I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. Yes, it will. You need to approach this situation logically. Ask him why he has the PA system installed if you can't use it. Why do you even have the PA system if no one's going to use it? It's part of my self-discovery. Help me. Uh, this is my way of apologizing for trouble I've caused. Please let me say I'm sorry. <laughs> you have a PA system. Why not? It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What? Great karaoke catastrophe of 44? What the heck are you talking about? What happened 44? A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. What? It's not a prop, it's your, for your clients. I know it's used. Okay, yes, it's for some clients. Uh, I'm a real client, I pay my bills, I even have the right to use it for the karaoke machine. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. It's alright, I got my own song with me. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll <laughs> plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. He really doesn't like it, huh? He shakes the tape at ya. I'm having it uninstalled. He mumbles to himself. <laughs> okay, who are you? You seem new. Always a pleasure to see an oh, officer of the law. I mean, 
officers. Okay, well, I don't need to talk to you anymore. Didn't realize I was guard. Okay. Let her rip. We're singing tonight before we're heading back home. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy. A little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Yes. Look, King. Look, Kim. I'm going to sing karaoke. Put your lips against the microphone. Test it. Uh, yeah, let's test it. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? Look around the room. The bar is full and buzzing with chatter. No one is paying you any attention. But still you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay, now a couple is looking at you. Even worse. Let's see. Look him. I'm re going to sing. I can see that. The lieutenant steps away from the stage, ready for your performance. Hand conundrum. Too close to the mic. Mm. Do I have anything for uh, drama? I think it's drama, right? Inland Empire Volition. Oh, this is actually better than the, the necktie. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll use that. Uh, do we have anything for drama? Minus one drama. We got, man, we have so much stuff now compared to what we started with. Oh, here's drama. Logic. Yeah, I don't think we're going to try that tonight. It's just, it's a red check. It's going to be really bad or really good. The stage is, you feel a little... So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Mm. Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Do I do it? Do I do it? And an 8% chance, do we do it? The air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. A lump's in your throat suddenly. How bad is this going to be? Now it once was larger. How the real may rest there. Down through the mist there. Towards the seven sisters. Towards those pale cliffs there I would often stay there in the tiny yard there I have been so glad here looking forward to the past here but now you're all alone. None of this matters. And all. <laughs> what was that? I shouldn't laugh. You don't laugh at people when they're doing karaoke. But <laughs> that was so horribly off tune. Uh, limbic system. 
Oh, that was Limbic System singing all that. I see. I see. Do you hear that? It's the most pathetic <laughs> applause in the world, Harry. Made of pity. No one liked you. Say, you didn't like it, huh? I'm up here singing my fucking heart out and it's not good enough for you fuckers? Fuck you, I gave it my fucking best, I gave it everything and you shit on me? <laughs> uh, fuck you. <laughs> Someone walks out of the room by the front door. Some woman. Is it because of you? Probably. Uh, you don't know what good singing is. This is real singing. I sang about real stuff. I sang about how I feel. Fuck you, old scum. <laughs> Just stand there. That's it. I'm unplugging it. <laughs> he presses stop on the tape carousel. You hear a little whine of feedback and then the mic dies in your hand. That's it. You're unpowered. <sighs> Let's go, officer. These people wouldn't know a good performance if it beat them in the ass. You liked it? Detective Dubois. It was downright tragic. <laughs> now, let's go. Okay, I get it. It's bad, but still. I mean it, he thinks. To him, being a cop in the RCM was truly expressed in that performance. <laughs> okay, I think that's a good spot to end it. So let's end it right here. We'll go to bed uh, next time and do all the other stuff that might come into my mind. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for coming. I got nothing to review this time. We'll review next time. This is... <laughs> I think this is all the review you need, the music. So I hope you enjoyed it, everyone, and have a nice rest of your day. See you later. Goodbye.